All right, so for this video, we are going to be explaining the gyroscope mass op one and op two. So I'm going to go over here, going to open up the drawing. Okay, so this part is going to come out of a piece of three and a half inch diameter that is sawed three, I'm sorry, sawed an inch and a half long. All right, so it finishes at 3.375. See, we've got this bolt pattern around it. We've got a center hole that is understood to be plus or minus two tenths. All right, that half inch, that's going to be datum A. The center line of that hole is going to be datum A. And everything else is based off of that. Okay? So, op one, and here's the model, just so you can see. All right? So, Going back to the setup sheet, uh, ignore that note to myself, but uh, your estimated setup time is going to be 90 minutes. Your estimated run time, and th this is at posted speeds and feet. So if you end up getting a cutter that is raising cane during a cut and you have to drop your spindle speed and feed rate, then this number is going to extend. Um, if you end up thinking that your cutters and machine can take a little bit more and bump these up, then you can always uh, shave a little time. But as always, I would recommend keeping everything at 100%. Uh, so estimated time to completion, that's going to be 180 minutes. Um, that's the time to gather your tools, uh, edit your code, uh, run your project, and you know do first article inspection on it, make any adjustments that are necessary. And, uh, and have a complete op one part in your hand. Um, so the program number is going to be 4040351. All right, this video is going to be a gyroscope mass walkthrough. That's subject to change. And how we're going to hold this is in a machine vise with soft jaws. Okay, um, I could make a whole separate video on that, um, which hopefully in, in the coming years we will. But just make sure that you talk to your instructor about that and he will walk you through, um, you know, how to cut these soft jaws properly. Okay. So uh, this stock, uh, stock will be held in a standard six inch vise with soft jaws machined to hold the raw stock. Soft jaw pocket should be machined 250 thousandths deep. Okay. Uh, G54 is located at the center of the part in the X and Y and the top of the part in the Z axis. The Z-axis offset will need to be adjusted to ensure the top of the part is clean of saw cut surfaces. So as you're running this, if you if you run your face mill and you still see some saw cut surfaces, then obviously you need to drop your Z and run it again. Okay, uh, here are your tools. And at, as we discussed in class, um, we're doing away with the whole tool number one, tool number two, tool number three. Everything is going to be based off of your standard tool set right here. Okay, so I saw one of those uh, tools was a half inch chucking reamer, tool 51. So if we go right here, I'm sorry. Yeah, half inch chucking reamer, tool 51 right there. All right, so one of the one of the things you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go into your code and edit these numbers. So it's going to post this as T21. All right, your machine doesn't hold 21 tools, so you are responsible for editing that and changing these values. Okay, that's 100% on you, um, but make sure you change your H values as well. All right. Uh, I do not recommend changing your D values. I would simply set D132 here to your actual cutter diameter, which is going to be 500 thousandths. Okay. All right. So let's get into fusion here. Okay. So let's, uh, let's walk through. Again, you've got your X, Y, and Z right there in the center, but I want you to notice that this offset comes off the top of the part, not the top of the stock. Okay, so the easiest thing to do here is when you set your offsets, touch off on the top of your stock and then drop it another 
10, 15, 20, 25 thousandths, whatever it takes to clean up. Okay. So first off, we're not doing, we're not carrying it to thickness or anything here. We're just trying to get a clean surface. Okay. So tool one, there's your face mill. Okay. Just going through making, uh, making three passes here. All right. And then this one is actually wrong. Thought I had gotten rid of that. Okay. So now it's gone. So you're going to face, then you're going to take your half inch end mill, your uh, half inch four flute coarse pitch roughing end mill with corner chamfer. You're going to walk around the outside of this part. You can see there in the graphics. Then you're going to take that same cutter and you're going to rough that slot out. Now, this is important. I want you to take note of this. Is we, uh, we always preach to you guys that end mills are not made to be treated like drills. They're not made to just go straight down into a workpiece. So what we do here is we are helixing down into it. Okay. So you can see this line is constantly getting lower and lower and lower as it's going down into the workpiece. So we're using a little bit of the bottom of the cutter and a lot of the side of the cutter. Okay. And it, 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 it's a whole lot better than just going straight down into the workpiece. Okay. So we rough the OD and then rough the circular slot. Then we're going to spot drill all the holes. Pre-drill, well, spot drill that hole as well. Yep, spot drill the quarter inch, then spot drill the half inch. Then pre-drill, so you're going to be using tool 21, which is going to be, I think, a 484 thousandths drill. Okay. Yep, 484 thousandths. Okay. Then you're going to ream that. Then you're going to pre-drill all but two of the holes. You're going to use a 242 thousandths drill for this in preparation for reaming it. Okay. So I want you to notice that we are not doing this hole in this hole. We're doing all the other ones. But also, I want you to look, we are not going full depth. Now, we're going all the way through the part, but we are not going all the way through the part and stock. It's very important that you understand that. Okay? So, after we drill those, then we are drilling the hole that's going to be at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And for these, we are drilling all the way through the part and the stock. So, just look at the different depths. Okay? And that's important when we get to op two so we can set the clocking. Okay. So then we are going to ream all these holes. Then we're going to ream the two deep holes. Then we are going to finish the outside. And this is where it's using cutter comp. So make sure that you specify that D value in your offset page. All right. And then we're going to finish all the surfaces on the inside here. We're going to finish the deck and we're going to finish the two sides and then we are going to deburr the entire part. So let's see what this looks like on simulation. Yep, should be good. So I'm going to face it. Turn off my model. So that's that helixing in, spotting all the holes, flip this baby over so that you can see and speed this up a little bit. Okay, so there are the two holes that came all the way through it. Okay. So you see we've got the other the other holes that don't go all the way through. And then we have the two that do. Very important. Okay. 
went through and chamfered all of those. Let's do a quick comparison on this. All right, you see everything is showing up in green. That means that everything should be within tolerance. Now, let's say that I change this to, you know, and I've got the tolerance set to two thousands now. Let's say that I set this tolerance to five tenths. Okay, you see my chamfers are a little bit weird. That's telling me that my chamfers aren't coming in perfect. They're within a thousandth. They're within eight tenths. But they're not within six or seven tenths. Okay. So, and guys, this comparison tool, when you get into Fusion, it's an awesome, awesome thing. But just be careful how you use it because it can surely bog down your computer. Okay. All right. So that's op one, right? And, you know, again, you're going to be holding this in soft jaws. Um, this cutter right here, this is going to be the one that goes down the deepest, the one that, you know, could kiss the top of your jaws. And let's go into this real quick and let's look at the depth. All right, so I'm going to the bottom of the model plus 20 thousandths. So this tool should go one inch and 20 thousandths deep. Okay, because this part is one inch thick. Okay. All right. And then the other one that could go pretty deep is this one. So let's take a look at this. This is, so this one's going 50 deep. Okay. 50 deeper. All right, so that one's actually going a little bit deeper than the rougher, which is going to be fine. All right, it's not going to hurt anything at all. Okay. All right. So that should cover op one. So let's uh, let's go back to uh, actually let's look at the drawing. So pretty much all the features are going to be cut in op one, except for your thickness and one of these depths. That's the only thing that's not gonna be cut in op one. Now we're gonna cut that on op two, obviously. All right, so let's go back over here. The notes before you break your setup, uh, check the OD to make sure this is in tolerance. If this needs to be changed, you can modify the diameter offset for tool 132 to alter this. All right, so if your part is too big, then you can lie to the machine Tell the machine that the tool is smaller than it is, and then it will walk into your part more. Okay? Um, so we've done this. We've talked about this a million times. You guys know how to handle this. Um, I, have no, I have no reservations to this whatsoever. I think y'all can feel your way through that. Um, make sure your 500 reamed hole goes all the way through your stock. Keyword there, stock, as this will be used to establish your X and Y work offsets in the next operation. Make sure the 251 reamed holes at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock go all the way through your stock, as this will be used to establish the clocking of the part in the next operation. Apply a rust preventative to the part to ensure no rust appears in the near future. So if you finish this part on a Tuesday at lunch, um, you know, it's a very strong possibility that this part could develop some rust before the next day. All right, so make sure you get some sort of rust preventative. Um, I'm a fan of WD-40, but, uh, you know, some people don't like it. Just get some sort of rust preventative on it. Um, wrap the part up in a cloth. Make sure that you're not beating it around in your tool bag. Uh, take care of the part, okay? So, after that, we are going to jump into OP2, okay? So, op two, the estimated setup time is longer now. The, the estimated setup time is going to be 120 minutes. Your estimated run time is 45 minutes. Time to completion is going to be 210. Four cutting tools. Your program number is 040352. All right, this is the, the video you're, you're watching right now. It'll be hyperlinked in the future. And uh, we're going to use a machine vise and soft jaws for this one. Okay. Now this is going to be a new set of soft jaws. 
because the last set that you cut were meant to hold three and a half inch stock. Now you're going to be clamping on a machine surface. Okay. So if we go, um, let's see here, let's go back to the print. So this number right here, that 3.375, you're going to be clamping on that diameter now. So you need to cut a new set of jaws to that diameter. Now, let me back up. If this number is perfect on your part, 3.375, then yes, cut it to 3.376. Okay, I'll, I'm a fan of cutting it one thousandths over. Okay, but we can talk about that in a, in a separate time as to when you would want undersized jaws versus oversized jaws. Um, that's a topic in and of itself, but you need to measure your part and you need to cut your jaws to fit your part. All right, the guy that's on the machine next to you, his is going to measure something totally different. You cannot share jaws here, okay? All right, so going back to the setup sheet here, <clears throat> part will be held in a six inch vise with soft jaws uh, to the actual diameter of your part plus a thousandths. Soft jaw pockets should be machined around 500 feet. Now, that doesn't have to be exact, okay? I don't want anybody coming to me and saying, Josh, my jaws are only 498 deep. It's fine. I assure you it's going to be fine. I'm just giving you something to shoot for. Um, you know, 500,000 should give you plenty of clamping force, okay? So G54 is located at the center of the part in the X and Y, and the top of the part in the z-axis. The carryover stop from op one will be machined off in this program. So I don't want anybody sweeping in on material, on stock. You will sweep in on the hole. Okay? So again, nobody sweep in on material, sweep in on the hole. Okay? Now, another thing that I want you to, to take note of is look at the location of the datum in the Z. It's the top of the part, not the top of the stock. So the best thing for this is going to be when you set your Z offset, measure from the saddle of the vise or wherever you set your tools to the bottom of your soft jaw and then add your part thickness. That's the easiest way to do this, okay? And then, you know, let the program cut all this off, all right? You, you just get that one number right, and then if you look, we've got a half inch end mill that comes in there and, uh, and knocks all that off, all right? So you got all that extra material, and then that rougher is gonna come in and knock it off, okay? So going back to the setup sheet, Okay, <clears throat> the first thing you're going to need to do is you need to establish the proper clocking of this part in the soft jaws. After you get your jaws cut, when you plop your part over in there, you're going to see that it is able to rotate like a clock. You're going to be able to grab the part and rotate it clockwise and counterclockwise. Okay, we need this part sitting to where the holes that we drill through it are at three o'clock and nine o'clock as perfect as we can get them, okay? So, um, and actually this little diagram here, hopefully that'll help, but we'll get to that here in a second. And I've got that drawn here, okay? So, let's see here. Let's hide that, hide that. So that's gonna be your part, all right? Shown in all blue. But that's, that's what your part's going to look like. First thing you're going to need to do is deburr these holes, these holes. Clean all this up around here with a file. Just clean the part up. You do not want any burrs messing up your dimensions here. Now remember, this is going to be saw cut. This is going to be crazy and nasty and lumpy and everything else. But for what we need is accurate. We need these hole locations and this location. All that's accurate. Okay, 
So you're going to put this part in here. You're going to eyeball it as close as you possibly can to be dead on at this hole at 3 o'clock, this hole at 9 o'clock. So you can, you can rotate it. It doesn't matter which, which hole is at 3 o'clock and which hole is at 9 o'clock. That doesn't matter. But then you're going to drop your pins in. Okay? You're going to go to the crib. You're going to get some dowel pins, and you're going to drop those in. Okay? And that is what we're going to use to align this. So we're going to sweep from here to here and make sure that that Y dimension is correct. Okay? Now, if we put it in here like that, right, obviously I'm at a big angle, then if I run an indicator across, you will see that this part is not clocked correctly. Okay? Now, sweeping off of pins isn't the easiest thing in the world. I'll give you that. So what we can do is we can add a parallel. All right, we can take a parallel, simply lay it on top, Make sure it's in contact with the pins, and you can bring your test indicator and touch off on this red surface and go across. And what you'll find is that your indicator is going to climb or drop, and we're doing all this with a test indicator now. And what you'll have to do is kind of tap the part around till you get this clocking set correctly. Okay? Uh, once you understand the process, it's fairly simple, but in practice, it's, it's a difficult thing because you need minute, tiny adjustments. And sometimes when you grab this part to try to shift it, you know, you need to move it a tenth of a degree and you accidentally move it 12 degrees, right? It's, it's not a simple thing. It's a simple idea, but it's not simple to do it. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the setup sheets. All this explains all of what I just talked about. Okay. All right. So that, that should make sense to you. I know. Just remember, this is the time consuming thing. You're not going to be able to get this done in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. It's going to take some time, but the more accurate you are with this, the better your gyroscope is going to run. All right. Once you get it clocked correctly, you're going to tighten your vise nail. You're going to get all that straight where your where your part is clocked and tight in the vise. Okay. Now, after you do that, you need to sweep in your X and Y. Okay. So for that, you're going to use a coax and you're going to get it as close as you possibly can, sweeping on this hole now. And then once you get it as close as you can with a coax you're going to switch to a 5 tenths test indicator. Use the indicator that's on your Noga base that's in your toolkit. And you're going to sweep this location in again. Okay. Now you're going to find that when you use the test indicator, uh, it's going to be a lot more accurate than the coax. Uh, sometimes a coax will show basically zero needle movement. And you check it with a test indicator and you find that you're a thousandths off in both the X and Y. Okay, now the print only calls out for a three-tenths coaxiality right, between the hole and the rest of the part. But as indicated, as, shown, as described here, you need to indicate much more accurately than this. Uh, if you are not able to locate within five-tenths of perfect, please consult with your instructor for direction on how to proceed. If you can't get it within five tenths, chances are we've got a bigger problem and we need to address it. Okay. Um, here are the four tools that are required for this. You got your face mail. You got your uh, high speed steel rougher. <clears throat> you got your carbide um, half inch end mill, and then you have your drill mill. Okay. Now let's go back to fusion and let's take a look at this and let's walk through these strategies. So this is where it's going to rough off your carryover stock. Uh, it may seem like it would be easier to just face this off, but in reality, this, um, this half inch shin mill, it is, you know, it, it's going to get in there and dig. All right. And it's, it's in my opinion, going to do a better job than a face mill, but that's, 
that's arguable, but this is a lot of material we're removing, and I would prefer to, uh, to step it in this way, okay? Um, but notice that I don't go all the way to the top of the part. So if we look at this one, this bottom line, this bottom line, that's your face mill. But this line, that's your rougher. It's going to cut off all the material except for this. And then your face mill is going to come in and clean the rest. Okay. Then from there, you're going to rough that slot again. Then you're going to finish that slot. Then you're going to deburr it. All right, so let's run that on simulation. <clears throat> now, I'm not simulating the first stop as well, so it's, it's not going to look like the part. All right, and it looks like it's trying to put these big heavy chamfers on it. But that's simply because I didn't run the first operation. So I can fix that real quick. Let's run both of these. Let's just blister through these real fast. Like a computer's kind of lagging behind a little bit, but you can see where now we're looking at a complete part. We can do a comparison on this. All right, it looks like it's showing my chamfers a little bit too deep, but you know they're within a thousandths. Okay, so there, there's my part after like the simulation. Here's the, the, the model overlay behind that, okay? All right, so let's go back to the setup sheet and let's look at this. Now, notes, if possible, inspect the thickness and adjust the Z-axis offset if needed, all right? Before you break your setup, if your thickness is wrong, if your thickness is too thick, then you still have time to fix that. But once you break your setup, if you want to go back and change your thickness, then, then you're going to have to re-indicate, re-sweep, redo everything, okay? So before you break your setup, that is the time to do it, all right? Verify that all edges have been properly chamfered per the print, all right? That's stick your set of calipers up in there and make sure that you have... Uh, machine break all sharp edges, 25 thousandths. Make sure you've got 25 thousandths chamfers on all surfaces, okay? If your chamfer mill, if your, if your drill mill broke, you know, now's the time to address that. All right, measure everything you can while the part is still clamped in the vise and adjust if needed. You know, check the thick or the depth of this pocket. Check the diameter of this boss. Check the diameter of this, um, you know, diameter here. Check, check everything while it's still in the vise. All right. Once you verified everything is good, take the part out, apply rust preventative to the part to ensure no rust appears in the near future. Now, you should not have to do any sanding, any scotch bright, anything to this part. This part should come out perfect. This part should come out exactly as we need it. You, you don't need to sand and scrub and, and, everything on this part, okay? Just just take it out, you're good. Unless you've got something crazy going on, which if that happens, come talk to your instructor, all right? <clears throat> but part should be, uh, be complete after this operation. Inspect part per QC sheets provided by your instructor. Make sure you clearly and legibly apply your name to this part to ease, to ease, yeah, well, to ease identification in the future. That's better, okay? And you should be good. 
Okay? So, again, here's your print. All right, here's your model. All right, let's run this through just one last time. Take it off of comparison. Put it on operation. And it, it should go without saying, but you absolutely need to make sure that you have got good coolant in your machine prior to running the first part. All right. You don't want to find out halfway through that you need coolant. All right. Make sure your coolant is full, topped off. Make sure your, um, your concentration is good. Check it with a refractometer. Make sure all that stuff is good prior to hitting start for the first time. Okay. All right, so that, that should be it. That's uh, gyroscope op one, op two. And uh, yeah, any questions, talk with your instructor. And we will, uh, sure enough, get you on the right path. Uh, thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. We'll uh, see you soon.